What's good y'all, it's your boy, Roblox. Back at it with another video, man. It's been a while since y'all have seen Roblox, this version of me, you know? I only bring this out when it starts to get cold down here in Houston, and it's been getting a little chilly. So I was like, you know what? Let me pull out my esteemed robe and, and uh, join y'all for a video. So these next few videos, I will be back in action for you guys because I know you guys miss the robe version of myself but we're gonna check out a former wwe champ hits rock bottom AEW losing millions of dollars potentially cm punk helping talent and other wrestling news by wrestlemania it should be a very interesting wrestling news related video subscribe to wrestlemania if you haven't already we're gonna get right into this one should be a good one man Guys, it is WrestleMania oh, here. Yeah, turn Back it down. Some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories Sorry, and rumors you need to know, including Jeez. is CM Punk Raw's secret weapon for its upcoming TV deal? AEW reportedly making a huge loss. Is AEW looking to sign Dolph Ziggler? The real reason why Sami Zayn asked for time off? Elbow to Del Rio hits rock bottom. And oh, more. yeah, I did Be see sure that. To Elbow to Del Rio that clip. Notification bell for daily wrestling videos. How the mighty and have fallen. For exclusive lists. Also, check out our new tis, website, WrestleMania.com. Now, let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at is CM Punk Raw's secret weapon for its upcoming TV deal? Mm. At the top of today's news, could CM Punk deliver big bucks for WWE sale of Raw's TV rights? The WWE is looking to secure a substantial increase when it lands a new TV rights deal for Raw, and Meltzer seems to think that CM Punk's presence on Raw could bring home the bacon. Meltzer had this to say on X saying, Things are changing greatly. Let's just say things changed greatly with Raw negotiations from a few weeks ago, and oh. Punk is a huge part of the selling point. While the WWE took a risk bringing Punk back to WWE, the risk has paid off so far. Punk has sold plenty of merch, increased ticket sales, and boosted ratings. As Ringside News noted, Warner Brothers Discovery executives saw Punk as a big deal when he worked in AEW. CM Punk garnered attention when, after his return to AEW, he shared that Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslov gave him the nickname One Bill Phil. Mm -hmm. This nickname suggests that featuring Punk on the show could potentially secure a $1 billion TV rights deal. The WWE has already negotiated deals with the USA Network to air SmackDown and CW to air NXT. Both led to more money for the WWE and the goal is to land even more money for the company's flagship yep. show Raw. The WWE derives much of its revenue from TV rights deals, so it must bring in the additional money every time it negotiates a new deal. Even more important because there's growing competition from sports leagues such as the NFL, NHL, MLB and the NBA. If a network or streaming service a large amount of money on football or hockey, they may not have the funds to pay for wrestling, which brings in viewers but typically doesn't bring in as much ad revenue as yeah. other professional sports. Ultimately, things will depend on TV executives doing due diligence to investigate Raw's value. Even without Punk's presence, Raw has grown in the ratings percentage-wise, something many long-running shows have been unable to do. It draws the all-important 18-49 demo, often coming up in the top 5 on cable. As that's, mentioned, that's TV executives good. often fail to grasp or even fail to grasp the many factors relating to wrestling successes and failures. Do you think CM Punk will lead to the WWE securing even more money for the rights to Raw? Let us know in the comments down below. Next, I can definitely possibly see that happening. I mean, that's why they obviously, you know, brought him over. This was a money move. Let's let's not get it twisted. This was a money move for sure. Bringing in CM Punk, bringing in that extra hype going into the WrestleMania season and their new TV deal that they're trying to acquire with Monday Night Raw. I can definitely see them that being a extra bargaining chip. Like we got CM Punk, merch is going up, sales is going up. People are wanting to watch the show, see what CM Punk has to say, what's going to happen create different storylines, you know, going forward into the WrestleMania season. Yeah. It happens that way. I mean, we saw what they were trying to do with um, CM Punk in AEW. They literally built a whole entire show around him, essentially. So, yeah, I can see WWE trying to use him as a bargaining chip to bring in uh, some extra money on a new uh, TV's de uh, TV deal going forward for Monday Night Raw. It, it only makes sense. It does. It works out in the end when it comes to WWE and their, their bottom line. So. Next up, AEW making a huge loss. 
Is AEW actually turning a profit? Well, not according to an analysis from WrestleNomics' Brandon Thursden, who tweeted, WrestleNomics estimates AEW's revenue will reach around $154 million in 2023. Mm -hmm. While still likely unprofitable, a doubling in TV rights fees could be enough to make AEW's business sustainable. It's been mm. estimated that AEW has lost more than $34 million. This is oh. with all the talent on the roster and their signing deals, as well as any overheads and tax they need to pay. AEW has been in the news a lot, and unfortunately, largely for negative views. Mm. While it's difficult to confirm Thurston's story, his analysis is well laid out and something to consider when evaluating AEW's financial success. One of the more troubling aspects of Thurston's report in his statement that AEW is not financially sustainable without getting its TV rights deal doubled. Given networks and streaming services demand for content, it's not out of the question, especially if AEW can spin that wrestling has enjoyed a surge in popularity without getting into the details of differences between WWE and AEW. What do you guys think of this? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to check out our recent video, The Sad Decline of AEW. Thank and once again, it's, it's going to come down to if these, these, um, these TV deals get renewed, they get more money. Um, I personally, me personally, I would want them. I still want them to succeed. I'm not going to be one of those people that say I, I want them to fail. I'm going to say this in every video because I see the, the dissension in the comment section when it comes to AEW and WWE. I want them to succeed. I want them to put on the best possible product because there's still some wrestlers over there that I enjoy watching and enjoy what they do. So I wouldn't want people to, you know, be in a situation where, you know, the company is starting to flounder. I do think they will be fine. They will have their core fan base. It's just going to be coming down to bringing in new fans because at some point you want to be able to bring in some type of new fans and, and you know, keep, keep that momentum going. I do feel like the momentum in AEW has died down just a bit, but I do feel like at the same time they can – find a way to bring that excitement and bring up that overall appeal to people that want to check out AEW if they want to want something different than WWE. So I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, it's the death of AEW. I know people have been saying that since CM Punk left. No, AEW, I think, will still be fine. They will still have their core fan base. It's just going to come down to what they do on a week-to-week -week television and if they can maintain that fan base and potentially get some more TV rights or these uh, other networks um, wanting to pay them um, as much money as possible to keep them on their network. That's all going to be dependent on how Tony Khan and how they, you know, book the shows and going forward. So I want them to succeed. I'm never going to be one of those people. Who I want them to fail. No, I hope they're able to, you know, come back in 2024 even better than they did uh, this previous year. That's my personal opinion. Next up, does Warner Brothers Discovery own part of AEW? One of the more interesting aspects of Thurston's analysis is in a statement. I believe WBD, Warner Brothers Discovery, owns a minority, not controlling stake in AEW, which Khan's recent evasive comments about being open to WBD have a greater stake seem to support. If WBD does own a portion of AEW, it suggests the company sees AEW as a content source worth investing its money in with TV rights. This could be good news for AEW, especially if WBD opts to take advantage of AEW's growing library and looking into streaming AEW. Next I up, help are them AEW out. looking to sign Dolph Ziggler? Is AEW eager to sign Nick Nemeth, the former Dolph Ziggler? While it's believed that Nemeth is under a non-compete clause until around 21st December, that hasn't stopped talk about him working in AEW. Wrestling Purist is reporting, according to sources in AEW, many within the company have been pushing for the signing of Nick Nemeth, formerly known as Dolph Ziggler, and there have been multiple creative pitches made for him. One of the pitches include him being one of CJ Perry's clients. Oh, no. And Nemeth is already scheduled to wrestle at World Wrestling Council against Ray Gonzalez at their 20th January Euphoria event, which is as he's ready to wrestle once his non-compete clause expires. However, does Nemeth want to sign a new deal with a company such as AEW or work as a free agent? Nick Nemeth is sure to find himself in high demand, not only for his value as a former superstar and two-time world champion, but for his incredible wrestling ability. Despite an uneven push in WWE, Nemeth is still considered one of wrestling's best workers. Oh, for sure. If he signs with AEW, the promotion will have a ready-made storyline if it opts to have CJ Perry manage him. 
whether you like that idea or not. And to be honest, we're not really hyped on it. No. CJ Perry had a storyline romance with Nemeth during their time in WWE. It makes sense, but He's no. He's working in AEW as a manager, and AEW has already started a storyline teasing tension between Perry and Mira over CJ's new managerial career. Surely, if Perry were to start managing Nick Nemeth, you can be sure that AEW would hint at their past relationship. But even if she doesn't manage Nemeth, he has plenty to offer AEW. Whether he wants to try and join a promotion where he'll have to fight tooth and claw to find TV time remains to be seen. Yeah. Nemeth may be content wrestling in other promotions such as WWC and larger indie promotions where he can still make good money and maintain his independence. Next up, the real reason- And that too, I, I just, I just don't, it's like I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have a problem with him being on AEW television, but at the same time, I just, it's not, the wrestler, it's just more so the booking. Like, for example, and some may disagree with me this on this, Edge's debut in AEW was dope. It was cool. Um, I even like the program he had, what is having with uh, Christian Cage, but I, I think they've overcooked it. I think they've kind of overdone it in a sense with all the extra additions to the feud. I think the feud just works great on itself and it's not that people don't enjoy those segments but it's it's lost its steam very very quickly it has and i feel like i don't want that to be the same thing with dolph ziggler and it's been like that with a lot of the the former wwe guys that go into aew they they've lost their steam because of just how they're booked or you know you may not even see them on tv that much like it's just it's a combination of finding the right balance of having someone on TV in a meaningful manner, and it makes sense, but also making sure the story that they're trying to tell also makes sense and is engaging with the fans. Um, I just don't want it to be another WWE guy that gets a little bit of hype for maybe the, the first month he's there and then poof, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Then we won't see or see him on television much or he'll be in meaningless feuds that don't really enhance what he's trying to do in this new company. I, I don't want it to be that. So that's why I'm like, if he does go to AEW, that's cool. I just want to make, I just would hope they would use him in a prominent manner and he doesn't get lost in the shuffle. So I don't know. I, I personally would probably want him to do his thing independently for a while before he even thinks about joining a, a long-term contract with another major wrestling company that's just my personal opinion but who knows since Sami Zayn asked for time off is Sami Zayn actually hurt while the WWE wrote him off TV with a kayfabe beating at the hands of Drew McIntyre a new report from Dave Meltzer speculates Zayn may be actually injured Meltzer mused on the Wrestling Observer Radio saying I was told that he asked for time off the partial torn meniscus may be legit because guys oh. are always hurt anyway Last week, I yeah. was told that Sammy's going to be off for a while. He's asked for time off, not over injury or anything like that. I don't know if he's got a potential torn meniscus or not. But so far, there have been no other reports concerning Sami Zayn's physical condition. Nonetheless, wrestling news often veers into speculation and fans are often happy to decide for themselves, such as the case here. Do you think Zayn is dealing with a nagging injury? Let us know in the comments down below. Hey man, if he needs time to recharge, refuel his batteries, He's been on a grind for the past, I don't know, almost two years <laughs> with the whole bloodline stuff and, you know, the tag team stuff and Kevin Owens and all this stuff. Let him recharge his batteries. Let him refuel. He deserves a break. If there's anybody who deserves a break, it's uh, Sami Zayn, man. So whenever he returns and he's refreshed and he's good, we'll be glad to have him back. So. Next up, CM Punk backstage at NXT. I what heard was CM about Punk this. Doing at the 12th December episode of NXT. Although he didn't appear on air, Fightful Select reports that Punk was hanging out backstage and offering advice to superstars on their matches. That's pretty cool. Punk was known for offering help to wrestlers during this time in AEW, and given the number of active superstars who were Punk fans when they were younger, this was probably thrilling and yeah, a that's great probably opportunity. Dope. Next up, a wrestling legend visits NXT again. A CM Punk wasn't the only wrestler backstage at NXT as PW Insider reports WWE Hall of Famer Dory Funk Jr. was there okay. as well. The 82-year-old former NWA World Heavyweight Champion paid a visit to the Black and Gold brand earlier this month. 
Dory Funk Jr. had plenty to share with today's wrestlers, given his decades of experience competing uh, yeah, around sure, the world. Definitely. Next up, The Undertaker names his Mount Rushmore tag teams. Ooh. If you're wondering which four teams are on The Undertaker's okay. Mount Rushmore tag teams, wonder no more as a phenom recently revealed his selections on his Six Feet Under YouTube channel. Taker named them in this order. Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. Okay. The Undertaker noted how Tully and Blanchard had it all. Wrestling ability, promo skills, and teamwork. Number three, the Midnight Express wow. of Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane. Taker made sure to mention their manager, Jim Cornette, who was a key component in the team's yep. success. Number two, the Rock and Roll Express. According to Taker, the Midnight Express success was tied into their feud with the Rock and Roll Express's Robert Gibson and Ricky Morton, and vice versa. And number one, the Road Warriors. Mm. Taker choosing Hawk and Animal wasn't a shocker, as the team is always in the top five of any discussion yep. of wrestling's greatest tank teams. What do you guys think of Taker's selection? Let us know in the comments down below. Obviously, all those teams are before my time, but I know they're, you know, parts of their history and, and the legacy that they've submitted. So I don't think anyone would disagree with his view on the top tag teams of all time. I, I think that list is, <laughs> I think that list works. <laughs> so I don't think anyone would disagree. Down below. Next up, this is just sad. If you're curious yep. about former WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio's current status in wrestling, well, a video was surfaced of Del Rio performing at an indie show, but according to Wrestling News, it wasn't exactly a capacity crowd he wrestled nope. in front of. The former superstar was making his way to the ring at a high school gym, which barely had any fans in attendance. According to Cage Match, Alberto Del Rio faced off against Sam Adonis at the Plantando Bandera event, which was held at the Athletic Complex in Dallas, Texas. Now, this is a major downfall in Alberto Del Rio's career. This yeah. is a man who wrestled as a champion in front of 70,000 plus fans at WrestleMania. His yeah. star has certainly fallen from the days when he main evented in WWE, but as fans know, a wrestler's fortunes can change in an instant. But could he come back from this? Let us know in the comments down below. And finally, Possibly. Sasha Banks hinting at a WWE return? Last but not least, Mercedes Money, aka former superstar Sasha Banks, has fans speculating again about her return to WWE. She recently posted photos and a video on Instagram of her 12th December 2012 debut in NXT. Mm. Is she just looking back at her anniversary or is she teasing about her future? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling. If anyone would be able to come back, if CM Punk can come back, best believe Sasha Banks, who is a Triple H you know, you know, supporters. She loves Triple H. Triple H loves her. If there's anybody that would come back, it would be Sasha. I would not even, wouldn't even second guess it. If CM Punk, of all people, who didn't like Triple H at one point, is able to say, fuck it, let's do some business, I am willing to bet my bottom dollar Sasha Banks could definitely come back. And I'm sure Naomi would if she wasn't in her contract with TNA. It's simple. That's 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 super simple. I would be if she shows up at the uh, next year's Royal Rumble. Crowd's gonna go crazy, and I'm gonna be fucking ec ecstatic. She doesn't. It's all good. I'm I'm willing to bet at some point whether it happens next year or whenever. She probably will be back in WWE because, once again, there's a different person running things now when it comes to the creative. And she's definitely been a supporter of Triple H, and Triple H has supported her as well. She's a Triple H guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, she rocks with Triple H for sure. So, we'll see how that happens. But comment down below. Let me know what's the most interesting news uh, story from this particular video, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still here on the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.